Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Lane Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at borderless printing on this, the ET8500. It's an eco-tank printer, which means it doesn't have cartridges, it has ink in the tanks at the bottom here, and it's preferred by some people because it saves the money you'd spend on ink cartridges. It generally works out cheaper printing. But I'm looking at borderless printing in this because some people like borderless prints. I don't use them much myself because I tend to print larger prints and I'll frame things. But if you want to do borderless prints, there are a few considerations you need to consider first. Now, Initially, there are only certain paper sizes supported. Now, I'll have a list of this in the specifications in the full review for it. But A4 that I'm going to print here is one of the borderless printed sizes. Now, unfortunately, you can't print borderless on custom print sizes. So if your size of paper is not listed as a borderless print size, um, then there's nothing much you can do about it other than print on a larger sheet of paper and get the guillotine out and trim it. Now, the picture I'm going to do um, is this one here. It's one of my architectural images. Uh, there's a larger view of it here on the other Mac, but um, it's one I've got a large print of on the wall here. It was taken for a client who'd uh, built a university building not far away from here. And it's a particularly unusual looking picture for, I would say for Leicester, in that it's a white painted building with a clear deep blue sky. Um, it, it certainly doesn't look what you'd normally expect in the UK Midlands. Yeah, we do have nice weather here sometimes, but um, this was a particularly fine day, very clear blue sky. Makes for an interesting print as well. Now the paper I'm using this time, it's a permajet paper called Oyster 271. It's a heavier than uh, normal luster paper. It's very similar to Epson Premium Luster. Um, for the media setting for this printer, because you have to set the media setting when you drop it in the back here, and, this, and I'm using the rear feed here. These front feeds are of no real use for this sort of printing. Um, the media setting, I'm using premium semi-gloss. There is no luster medium setting here, media setting, I should say. And when I created the profile for this, and all my profiles will be, avail will be available when I finish the review of this, um, I've created a profile for the Oyster 271. It's a nice finish. It's a nice, relatively thick paper for a luster paper. It's not too bright. The surface texture is not too intrusive. It's just a very nice paper to use. Um, Epson Premium Luster would be similar to it, but is a little bit brighter and a little bit shinier. Uh, this printer doesn't always show its best on really glossy papers. It does nice glossy prints, but this printer I found, and the 8550, very much excels on some art papers, papers like this, luster papers, normal gloss papers. It's very printer, very paper dependent. And um, you, to get the best out of these printers, you really do need profiles for it. Anyway, enough of that, the print. I've opened the image in Photoshop here. Now this is an old version of Photoshop running on this, this laptop top here. Uh, the file's opened here just normally on this Mac. This one runs uh, Mac OS 13 or Ventura. Um, but here's the image and I could print it directly from Photoshop, but I'm going to use the Epson Print Layout tool. Free software, um, I've got lots of other uh, videos and written reviews that mention it, cover aspects of using it. And it's a really nifty bit of software, and it, as I say, it's free. Now, I'm going to call this from the Automate menu here. I go to the Automate menu, go down to Print Layout. Uh, when you install the driver here, if you look in the folder that, uh, of the uh, Epson Print Layout software, you'll find another folder about the install software, and that's where you can install the plugin. Uh, some, uh, I can't remember whether it installs it of its own accord, but you can install it fairly easily anyway. Now, the file is being sent from Photoshop through to Epson Print Layer. Takes a few seconds on this particular Mac because it's not lightning quick. Printer has just woken up and does start making noises. Printers are like that. Um, they decide to do cleanings and adjustments every so often. It's perfectly normal, even if completely inexplicable. 
Now, I've got the image open. As you can see, it has a border around it. Now, getting the right settings for borderless printing, as I said, you, you need to expand the image. It needs to go effectively over the edges of the paper. Now, that means you have to consider the aspect ratio of the image. If it's a tall, thin image and you've got a square bit of paper, it's going to need, you're going to lose quite a bit at the top and the bottom of the image. This one is a relatively tallish image. Now, I'm looking at what the settings are here. I've got it set for the right printer. I've got it set for Epson Premium Semi-Gloss, which is the media setting I used when I made the custom profile for this. I set it A4, paper source. Now, you have to specify in the paper source whether it's borderless or not. In this particular one, I've select, selected rear paper feeder, borderless. And that's set it up for borderless printing. Uh, quality I've set to high because it does make a little bit of difference on it. It, makes, it takes a bit longer to print, but at A4 size prints, it really doesn't make that much difference. Uh, layout settings, standard portrait mode, that's fine. Centering, I've set, it, set that. Now, I've selected the expansion box on this. Now, the expansion box shows a little border around the edge of the paper area here, and it lets you see how the image is being stretched. Now, as it stands, I've got a border on this, although it's printing borderless. I need to enlarge the image to get it. Now I've got this set to margins and I'm just going to reduce the margin and the image gets bigger. Now I'm doing the just the top and bottom margins there. I think see it's left a border on the edge. I need the other margin as well. I can now expand the image out that way and you see at a certain point the whole image expands and there we go. I've got rid of the border. Now, I can alter these settings here. I can move the image around. But the key thing is to remember that if you want borderless printing, you're going to lose some of the edge of your picture. Um, if you want the whole picture printing, you yeah, print it with a border. So there we go. We've got a picture now. It's there. Uh, I can see a border around the edge here because I've got the expansion switched on. If I switch the expansion off, that'll disappear. Now, what about print settings for it? Well, I've selected use ICC profile. I've selected my own ICC profile. That's one I created. Now you can use uh, the installed Epson premium semi-gloss profile, but obviously it's not optimized for this paper. In fact, even if I was using Epson premium luster paper, because that's not an, accept an installed paper type, I don't have an Epson Premium Luster profile. Now I have one that I've built and it's in the collection of ones I've made, so I could use that. Next up, I've picked a rendering intent of relative colorimetric with black point compensation ticked. That's my normal approach for my profiles that I use. So I've got everything set up here. I've got the image, I've opened it in here. Now I didn't have to open it from, Pro, uh, from Photoshop. I could have just opened the image directly. It does need either a TIFF or a JPEG image. So you may need to export an image from your image editing software and you load it in here. If you're concerned about the resolution and setting the, setting the resolution, the printer driver for this doesn't need a specific resolution. It just needs enough detail. And in this, uh, because I know that this image is the same one that was used for printing the huge great print on the wall here, um, this has actually got an image resolution of 900 and fix, 950 pixels per inch. That is massive, way beyond what any normal printer can manage. What does that mean for making a print? Well, actually, it just means the print, the, the, the computers, the fans are more likely to whir a bit. It's going to have to do a bit more work, the computer, to send the image to the printer. In terms of print quality, we're going to get the best print quality out of it that you can get out of it on the paper and with the settings. Sending excess resolution just slows things down. Um, if I was going to print this off, I wouldn't have made it, I wouldn't have used this image. It just happens to be an image that I have, one of my test images, and it's the one that's, uh, say, shown on the screen here. Now, that shows some of the detail in it. You're unlikely to see that on a print this small. Uh, this was designed for a much larger print there. Now, I'm just going to click on print. 
and I can see the progress bar that uh, sending printer data, yeah, it's taking it a little while to work this out. It's going to, it will send the stuff and then it'll have to process stuff and send it to the uh, printer here. One other bit about using borderless printing. When you print borderless, the ink has to print right to the edge of the paper and it does that by over spraying the edge a little bit. Now it goes past the edge, that has to go somewhere. There are, there's a collection system here. Uh, this is a waste tank and various other, but overspray has to be collected. Most of the overspray in borderless printing, and this goes for even large printers like the uh, P5000 that's here. Uh, most overspray like that is collected, but a little bit of droplets of ink may get into the air in here and spread around the mechanism. If you do a lot of borderless printing, then the inside looks like prints on its way. If you do a lot of borderless printing, the insides of your printer will pick up ink overspray. The ink overspray will have dust stick to it from paper or just dust in the room that goes through into the printer. So if you do a lot of borderless printing, you will have to think about cleaning your printer um, because the, the dust and ink can build up and you can end up getting smears on prints. You can get the start of a print made little black drops of ink or something you need to clean them. Now I've got a video that looks at cleaning the 8550, which is essentially identical to this. The only difference is you've got slightly less space to work inside because it's a smaller printer, this one here, than it was the 8550. Anyway, it is doing its print. It's because I've set it to high quality. It's going to take a little while. So uh, we'll just wait for the print. Well, here comes the print. I've just moved the bit of this image that's on display here and you can see the sky that I was referring to. Um, whenever I look out the window and I see a sky that colour, I think, what have I got to photograph today? Because um, skies like that work nicely for architectural photography uh, when you can get them. Anyway, here's the image. Notice the lights. Uh, uh, there's a little light underneath here that illuminates the print as it's coming out. Uh, it is quite a bluish light, so don't base your colour perceptions on that. Um, it's really just to see if there are any faults in the print and also so you can look inside and see what's coming out. Now, it has printed perfectly up to the edge and uh, should have a print any moment. There we go. And there is one borderless print. Um, looks rather nice. Um, I mean, I know the image. I know it's going to print well. Um, if the printer's working OK and the profile's OK, then the picture's going to look good. You know, there are very little, or you know, there's very little difference between these two. This particular monitor is calibrated and to a slightly warmer temperature than this one here. This one here, slightly warmer than the room lighting. This one's slightly cooler than the room lighting. It's just dependent on that. I, I've looked elsewhere. I've got videos about how I can get monitors like this to look okay on video. And it's also one of the reasons why my prints tend to match the screen for the video videos. It's set up that way. It's cheating a bit, but certainly in this lighting here, if I look at that picture over there, um, that's fine. Um, that is an excellent borderless print and it works rather nicely. Now, let's say I've lost some of the image. If I look at the large print over here, I can see I've lost a bit of the ground there and a few, bit, a few of the wooden slats at the top here are missing, but that's what you get with borderless. Um, if you want to check the sizes, have a look at the driver. It won't let you select boardless for non-supported sizes. So A5, for example, I just put this to A5. I'll look in detail at what sizes, and I'm going to look at printing cards and smaller uh, papers on this printer as well. But I just wanted to do this basic video that just covers making a borderless print. So there you have it. Um, if you found it helpful, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, 
yeah, ask questions. I've only got the printer for a relatively limited time. I will be having the detailed review in due course that will have far more technical detail and it will have full lists of which papers are supported and all the things like that. And it'll have links to all my videos as well. So there you go. Borderless printing on the ET8500. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.